What's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a good day. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves, getting good nutrition, getting good exercise, and in general, just taking care of yourselves in these crazy times. I hope you're finding time to get into the studio and get creative. And overall, I hope you're all enjoying your Sunday. Um, as usual, we're going to jump right into it. We are creating, we are inventing some new theme sounds some new theme sonics for today. And we're gonna take this opportunity actually um, to introduce a brand new instrument that has just come out. I'm thinking about this, this video might actually go up a little earlier than scheduled as well, only because this is brand new. This is brand spanking new. What we're looking at <clears throat> is the GGD Get Good Drums One Kit Wonder. <laughs> Nice. I see what you guys did there. One Kit Wonder, Modern Fusion. And um, if you go to the website and check it out, it's basically meant for the genre Modern Fusion. But if you dig into the drum kit, you know, it sounds great, dudes. It sounds great. And um, I'm just going to, you know, I've just loaded it up. I've just pressed these two buttons and I've just I've only set it up so that we can record this in Pro Tools very easily. So I've jumped into the mixer and set the outputs. And look, guys, this, these are your options. You got kick, snare, tom one, tom two, tom three, overheads, room. And within each of these, there's some balance controls where you can say, OK, in the overheads and rooms, for example, how much of that is hi-hat, ride, cymbals, reverb, right? And you have some, um, you have some options here on how uh, the, the, the sounds here are balanced in terms of close mics, overheads, all that good stuff. So, um, you know, you can, you can send um, these then out to a individual output within contact, and that's what I'm recording here on these channels. So if you see these channels, the audio on these channels, is is lighting up well so um we're basically ready to jump into the sounds and what i just want to do is i just want to play through the presets check out this instrument it's brand new um so it's you know if again if you go visit the website and dig into um kind of you know how it was put together what it's made out of you know the 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 sauce you know how how the sausage is made kind of um it's, you know, it's recorded in the same exact way that all their other Get Good Drums uh, instruments are recorded, but it's meant to jump in here and get, if you're a modern fusion uh, artist or just an artist that likes these drum sounds, you can jump in here and get a great sound very quickly and very easily. Um, I started to try to listen for what the differences are between these two buttons, having them engaged and having them not engaged. These don't open any menus or anything like that. It's a button. So if you want parallel compression, turn it on, right? If you want master EQ, turn it on, right? You don't get to pick uh, how that's gonna sound or not sound, but you can try to interpret for yourselves if you like that or not. So I'm gonna turn it off, and then let's make a judgment call on at least this first preset, which one we like. So if I just start playing some stuff. Sounds really good. Sounds really, really good. Um, already sounds really, really good. And the, um, the parallel uh, compression, if I turn that, so if, let me play again, and then I'll just kind of A, B the two. So this is uh, off. And then let's turn that on. So I do hear the snare. I do hear the snare open up uh, a little bit and just get a little bit larger. So again, that's off. That's on. Um, other, you know, it's hard for me to really hear the di the differences other than that. Let's 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 check out the toms with and without. Yeah, I definitely hear those open up a little bit more too. Uh, so th there is some parallel compression happening. Uh, you can hear that a little bit. Um, you do have to listen for it a little bit and I'm only just 
this is ear training, right? This is good ear training, actually. It's a great ear training exercise because being able to hear the differences between certain stuff is, um, is, is a key skill when you are working on audio. Being able to tell is something good or not and, and, and being able to, to make it onto the good side if it doesn't sound so good. Um, let's check out what it sounds like with the master EQ. I actually really like the way that sounds with both of them turned on. So let's turn both of them off. Yeah, I like it with both of them on personally. <clears throat> and it's it is a little difficult to hear the difference. Um, but it is you, you can you can definitely tell some stuff is happening, especially if you listen to that snare. Um, so again, it, it's, it's meant to come in here and be very simple. It's meant to come in here and start recording some drums very quickly and very easily. I could have for the last six minutes already. Um, I just haven't yet. You know what I mean? So um, I just want to flip through these presets, these snapshots, and see what else we got. Show me what you got. All right. All right, it all starts here, master EQ engaged. All right, and then super dry, let's hear that. Yep, I would say that's uh, pretty dry sounding. Man, that sounds great though just even just the dry like you could throw that super dry into um some harmonics and distortion do a little queens of the stone age and that would sound sweet i bet so we might uh make mental note of jacking with that one day um so i accidentally clicked on about let's get back to the full kit side this is uh number four clean fusion Master EQ engaged. Interestingly enough, the master EQ is not engaged. And you know what? I bet, I bet that my understanding of whether or not it's turned on or off is probably, it's probably turned on when it's black. So interesting that I said at the very beginning, at the beneging, that I liked it with it turned on, and it was actually turned off. Um, that's my understanding now at this point, just looking at some of the other buttons and looking at the one that is engaged here and the ones that are not engaged. The one that is engaged is black, and the ones not engaged are white. Same here. So my, that, that would be my assumption on these buttons as well. Um, anyway, uh, jumping back to the presets, let's rock. Yep, I would say so. That's a good rock tone. Let's go natural and roomy. That's, I like that room sound. That's nice. That's really nice. Um, tight and dry. Yep, very dry. Um, you can tell those room sounds really open up that snare and just, you know, it gives you a lot of um, openness. Anyway, it's very nice. Uh, let's kind of go what looks like the opposite of that with very roomy. I just love those sounds. They never sound that great in a mix, though, guys. That's the that's the cautionary tale, right? You just got to remember that, and you'll find out for yourselves 
man. Open up one of these drum kits and make it sound very roomy. Right, and then put just a little compression and distortion on that and it's gonna go freaking nuts. So, um, yeah, you just, you gotta be careful with that stuff. Um, take it easy, take it easy with it, you know? That's what you gotta do. Let's, let's, let's make a judgment call on which one is our favorite. I think it's that rock tone. I really like this one though too. It's a cool, it'd be cool for a section to really have some, and that's what I like to play with in, in certain parts of songs. If you have a big, do 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 if you have a big, you know, sort of, um, uh, what's that artist, what's that artist's name? I can feel it, Phil Collins. If you have a big Phil Collins, Tom Phil, uh, but, right, but a fade, uh, just ride the rooms up on that part, and then bring them back down if you need. Um, to control those for the rest of the song. But I, I think those moments, the drums need to open up a little bit. They need to bloom a little bit. So that's it is cool to have a very roomy tone for those moments, for sure, in my opinion. Anyway, um, I think that's pretty cool. Which one do we like better, this very roomy one or Let's Rock? I bet it's that one, so let's see. Yes, because you get that room, but you get enough dry signal in there that it still, it punches you, you know, and um, modern, let's rock, modern fusion. Yep, I think that's it. I think that's the winner, winner chicken dinner, at least for right now. So what did we fire up this session for, guys? Well, I actually fired this session up from a template. So if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you'll know that I um, I, I love setting up templates. I love setting up myself uh, to win in the future when I wanna jump into Pro Tools and start recording these drums right now. I've already set up a template to do that. I've already set up a track template to do that called Modern Fusion Drums. It's ready to go in multiple respects. So I've created this session from a template because I wanna just record some fairly straight drums, a fairly straight rhythm to um, practice guitar scales to and uh, not have to do it to a dumb sounding metronome. Or, <laughs> you know, I want, I want to hear some cool uh, drums. I want to hear cool rhythm when I do that. So I'm going to record a little bit of drums and we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm going to go fairly straight on the hi-hat rhythm and just like, um, so not quarter notes. So not one, two, three, four. I'm gonna try to go like one and two and three and four. So I'm gonna play on the up as well. So one and two, one and two and three and four. But instead of opening it up on the up, I'm actually gonna open it up on the downbeat because I like whenever, <clears throat> and to me, this is at least what I hear when I'm hearing drums and any time I've actually played a drum kit, in real life, which I do have done from time to time. I'm not very good at it, but I do have some rhythm because I do do this all the time. Um, anytime I've played a drum kit, I actually um, lean into the hat a little bit more whenever the snare comes down. So if I'm playing, say, a, um, you know, one, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, then that means that, you know, one, one hand is on the hat the whole time. You do an eighth notes, one and two and three and four. But I find that every time I hit the kick drum on the downbeat or every time I hit that snare, you know what I mean? It's like, pss, 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 pss. It, the, the, the hi-hat breathes a little bit and it gives um, what the Granger brothers call, uh, look them up if you haven't uh, uh, seen them play uh, rhythm. Uh, but anyway, what the Granger brothers call a little hump, instead of having a straight sounding hat sound, Which, nothing wrong with that, that's fine. But that's a metronome, I don't want that. I want it to sound like a human being playing it. And when a human being plays it, especially if they're playing rock, they lean into that hat a little bit so that the hat is actually a little hump, you know what I mean? And so that either on the downbeat or on the up, that hat sound is a little bit louder because at that same moment, they're hitting the kick drum or they're hitting the snare. So it's like, bah, 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 
bah, you know, and so the 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 um the hi hats sound a little bit more like this. Or like this. It sounds just a little bit more open. It's still closed, still closed hi-hat, but they're hitting it a little bit harder, or they're opening it up just slightly, or they're doing they're accenting it in a way that humps it. It creates instead of just or which again there's nothing wrong with those but it's more human if you and and get good drums is great about providing alternate hat sounds those are not hats the blue ones so everything in here are hats and you can hear that actually with the exception of this last one it gets more and more closed until I'm sorry it gets more and more open from closed until it's fully open so if you start over here on the first one and then gradually work your way up. Even just working your way between this one and this one, which sound very similar, but it does hump just slightly if you just... It's a slightly different tone because it's hitting it slightly harder, right? That's a little more pronounced, right? A little more pronounced hump. So I like that I, I spent four minutes talking about a hi-hat hum. But I'm just, I'm just saying I like the way that sounds a little bit more, especially when you put it in context with hitting the kick drum and the snare at the same moment as that hump. So I'll demonstrate that. So let's give you a one, uh, two, three, four with the hats only. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. And I'm hitting it pretty hard, but you get the idea, you know. Um, okay, so let's get some recording done. Uh, we don't want to be here too long. I actually want to get this back to my guitar amplifier fairly quickly so that I can um, practice some guitar stuff. Um, also, uh, we are still working on, as I mentioned at the beginning of the song, we are still working on some theme sonics. For a new theme song and I'm going to introduce some acoustic drums to the overall recording very very soon um is it going to be these I don't know uh, these are strong contender I think it's either going to be these or the uh the p4 moderns uh that ggd has but I really like the sound of this kit it's really cool especially on this let's rock preset really really cool stuff
All right, guys, we did what we came to do. We have recorded some drums. We'll go ahead and get these into stems. We'll go ahead and get this bounced to an audio file that I can take with me. And we'll keep enjoying our Sunday. Until next time.